up here in Herman's Gap and it's really windy. I mean, the trees are bent. We have no water in the institution this morning. It's hard to keep up. I mean, things are just changing so fast. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to talk about radios. So grab your cup of coffee. Join us. We're going to have a little conversation about ham radios. So let's get right into it. Um, first of all, I want to talk about the, why you would need a ham radio. And honestly, um, I I hmm, I bought a radio before I ever got my license, and I did get my license. Uh, I am a licensed ham, which is really nerdy. Now that, now that I'm saying it out loud, it's a really nerdy thing to do, but. Uh, I will say this, it's very useful. Um, having your ham license can also open up some opportunities for you to be able to have communication with people, not just in your little neighborhood, but also it gives you the ability to have communication. Uh, if you do some research on it, way out, a couple hundred miles, and, and if you have the proper equipment and the proper antenna set up, uh, you can actually hear things in other countries, communicate with people in other countries, which is pretty neat, uh, just in itself. Now, I know that a lot of people are saying, well, isn't that what a cell phone is for? Sure, sure. That, that is a good point. And yes, you can hop on your cell phone and text message or get on the internet or make a phone call and talk to those people, you know, hundreds of miles away, thousands of miles away even. Um, but... What happens if your cell phone system goes down? What happens if that portion of the grid goes down and then what? Then you're, you're stuck with no, no form of communication whatsoever um, unless you're able to use a ham radio. And at that point in life, if, if everything has gone absolutely to poop, you're probably not gonna be worried about having a ham radio license, but you might be worried about not having a ham radio. So, um, that's the why. I have my community, we have radios. Uh, I have made sure that I've done everything to make sure that I am legal. Maybe this is a good time for the disclaimer. This is a reminder that this video is for entertainment purposes only. Under no circumstances will Well Done Homestead be responsible or liable for any illegal or irresponsible actions that you, the viewer, might commit as a result of watching this video. So if you do something dumb and get arrested for it, do not blame me or this channel because this is my attempt to tell you not to break any local, state, or federal laws. But I have my radio, and I have my license, and honestly, if you, uh, if you want to, and your community is looking for some way to uh, communicate with one another without getting into the ham radio thing, taking the license, studying, it took me um, about a week to study for the, uh, the technician license, which is the first level. And it wasn't terrible, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. I mean, I wouldn't have been able to pass the test without studying, because I don't know that kind of stuff. I don't know about radio waves and electrical currents and that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, so I went and got my license. Uh, so I do have, I do have the license to, to communicate. And, and as you heard it there at the beginning, um, that is a radio net that I'm a part of with some local guys uh, here in my community um, off of a repeater that is in uh, the city that's north of me. Um, which isn't super far away, probably 20 miles away, 18 miles away, something like that. Now the repeater, the repeater is probably 20 miles away. Um, but you have to remember too that if the electricity goes down, the repeaters are going to go down too. So your radio might be battery operated. It might work for a while until it needs a charge. But if you don't have a way to charge it again, once that battery's gone, it's done. That's it. Uh, once the charge is gone, you're not gonna charge it again until the electricity comes back. So, if you have a grid down situation for a week, um, it might not be that big a deal. Uh, you might not be able to communicate with people beyond your community, your little hamlet, uh, but that's okay. You can at least be able to talk to your neighbors, 
And, and that's what I mean by a community. People that you trust, that you live near, uh, that you can uh, communicate with one another. To get started, you don't need a license. You really don't. Um, you can buy a radio, which if you get a cheap one, I have a cheap one right here. Um, this little guy right here, which is uh, a Baofang. Uh, there's a number of different types of Baofangs um, that have different capabilities. This one is a UV5R Plus Pro, which has eight watts of power, which it, well, that's what it advertises, but it was made in China. So probably not a full eight watts. My guess is somewhere in the high sixes. Um, but that is one full watt more than the UV5R Plus, which is five. Uh, they, there are some that claim to be eight watts that really aren't. They're only five watt radios that are just, they're lying in their, in their advertising. But this guy right here was literally 28 bucks. Um, so 30 bucks, 35 bucks figure with tax and with uh, shipping, um, you can get yourself a radio. Now I will say this little whip antenna did not come with it. This came from a company called Signal Sticks. Um, this antenna is actually 25 bucks as well. So I doubled the value of the radio <laughs> by putting an antenna on it. But the, the antenna is what's going to help your radio send and receive the information, the radio waves. So having a good antenna is vitally, and I mean vitally important, if you're gonna do ham radio. Now, uh, this, this is all you need to get started. You crack this thing open out of the box. Um, now you will need to program it in your computer, um, which means you're gonna have to probably learn a little bit about how to program. Now, I'm not gonna go through that with you. Um, the If you get a Baofeng um, or even a TYT or something, some of these Chinese radios, you're gonna use a company or a, a, a software called Chirp, C-H-I-R-P, Chirp. And you're gonna have to download it and you're gonna have to know which one to download. And I had a friend of mine show me how to do that. But there are videos on YouTube on what to download, how to download it, and how to get it up and running, how to program your radio. Some very knowledgeable individuals that I stood in their shoulders <laughs> and, and followed their instructions. Because now I know how to do it. And, uh, and that's really important to know how. But to, as far as where to go to get the uh, program and, and not get you a, a virus somewhere, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but I will say this, if you get one of these radios, this is not a bad investment to have. And you don't have to get the big signal stick antenna. You can get the regular little rubber ducky antenna that only sits about that high. And it works. It, it, it decreases the amount of distance that you can receive or send transmissions from. But if without a license, you're not gonna send a transmission anyway. Um, but you can listen for free. You can turn this sucker on, you can find a station that people are talking on and you can gain information for free. And that is really important to do, honestly. Very important to do, especially as things slide into chaos, you're going to want to know your local stations, your local um, repeaters, your local police, uh, you definitely want to be able to listen so that you know what's coming up, you know what's what's uh, you know what's happening around your area. Especially if, I mean, we already talked about the fact that media is not telling us what really is happening in life. So, having one of these little radios is super super important. I mean, super important, and and that's part of the why. Um, now, I will say this: you can get Baofang radios that are uh, they operate on the GMRS uh, frequencies. Now, if you're going to use a GMRS radio, which is like the little Motorola's that we used to use as kids. Remember the little walkie talkies? And you'd, uh, you know, you'd have your buddy that lived four houses down and you'd stay up until one o'clock in the morning talking with each other, making plans. Or maybe that was just me, I don't know. Anyway, well you make plans, you know, and you, you, you know, use your radio and then the next morning you forgot to shut it off and the batteries are dead. So your parents were going through batteries and buying batteries for you, double A's or whatever, uh, forever. If you're gonna buy a blister pack radio, it's gonna be about two watts, two watts or less. Um, and you can use those all day, all day, uh, as, as often as you want to. Um, and nobody's gonna care. 
uh, with no license, no nothing, okay? So if you want to do that, you can. That's not a bad idea if that's what you want to put together and your people are only going to be operating, going to be communicating within a very small radius, that's fine, that'll work. But if you have somebody that might be a few miles out of town, that's going to be a different story. You're not going to be able to work on just two watts. You're going to have to use something a little bigger. And generally, those little two watt radios, they just have a little rubber antenna that's been fused into there. You can't change the antenna out and uh, get yourself a little better signal and that kind of thing. So my recommendation is to get a little, if you're going to use GMRS, spend a little more money, 30 bucks, 35 bucks, and buy yourself a five watt GMRS. I know it doesn't sound like much, but doubling your wattage actually pushes that signal out quite a bit further. Get it so that you can replace the antenna, make a, you know, make it so that that thing actually will, will reach out. Um, I can get my little five watt radio. This little radio, this five watt radio, I can actually connect with the repeater, which is 20 miles away from my house with that little five watt radio because I have a big antenna that I've set up in my attic. But I bought that antenna so that I could connect with the uh, the repeaters that are around me because I have a lot of hills uh, in the area of the country that I live. And radio frequency is line of sight, meaning that if it can't go directly to from one antenna to the next, it's it's not going to communicate. If you have a mountain in between you, you're not going through the mountain. It's it's very unlikely that the radio frequency is going to go over the mountain. It's going to go hit hit it, and that's going to be it. It's going to bounce off, and, and you're not going to connect. So you got to keep that in mind. So I put that antenna in my attic so that I could connect with the repeaters in my hilly area. Hilly area. <laughs> anyway, so this is a lot of information, guys. I know this is a lot of information, but um, I feel like it's really important information. But yeah, you can get onto the FCC website and you can actually purchase a GMRS license for your family for $35 and it lasts for 10 years. Now it used to be, well, it doesn't matter what it used to be because those days are gone, but $35 and you can get your GMRS license and you don't have to have any kind of test. There's nothing, there's just nothing. And so then you can get on the radio waves with the GMRS radio and listen to the GMRS frequencies. Now you are limited just to the GMRS frequencies. Don't think that now you have your, your GMRS call sign and now you can hop on to you know, the local repeater that's a two meter repeater and, and talk away because you can't, you're not allowed to. It's, uh, it's not permitted. Um, so your GMRS radio, you can get a set of those for your community. Um, but if you want something that's going to be a little more, I want to say legit because GMRS is fine. Uh, if that's, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. If you want to get though uh, a, a two meter or 70 centimeter uh, ham radio, that's that's a good one to get, and it's not expensive. But gaining information is the name of the game when you have a radio. You can do the same thing with a scanner, but I'm not gonna lie, a decent scanner from Uniden or from even Kenwood or um, I don't know if Motorola still makes them or not, they're hundreds of dollars, it's crazy, and you can't even transmit with it. You might as well buy a radio for that much money and then listen, um, program in the uh, frequencies and listen. But the scanner, you can do a scanner. You can do a scanner app on your phone if you want to. Then it doesn't cost you anything. There are some scanner apps that are free, and you don't have to worry about it pen, uh, paying a penny. You can just listen to whoever, whatever scanner you want to listen to. Um, but having a scanner is the, is the same idea as having a radio without the license. You're just going to listen to the information, gain information for your uh, family, for you know, for your use individually, your community, whatever. Uh, I will say this, if you're trying to use this method of communication as a secret method of communication, uh, and uh, you know, that's not gonna work because people, anybody can listen. Like they, if you have your little Baofeng on, even if I have my Yesu on, and uh, I'm, I'm talking to somebody, they can hear you. And you know what else? If you know how, they can find you. They can use uh, a fox finder antenna and they can triangulate your position based on your radio frequency they can find you which is crazy but they can do it and it's not even that difficult I I'm not gonna lie uh, I've, I've done a little bit of research on this um, and it's it's not hard you can find uh, uh, people <laughs> it's super simple especially if they're not mobile 
like my car radio would be a little more difficult to triangulate just because it's moving um but if i'm talking or if i'm you know whatever if i'm talking on my radio um and i'm trying to be all secretive if somebody knows what they're doing they can find me pretty pretty easily but anyway so uh yeah i've kind of rambled on here for a while i uh there's a lot of information that i just kind of threw at you in this this video um there are i mean literally probably thousands of videos on youtube here that talk about uh programming and what radio is best and if you have a bug out radio what bug out radio is best i mean you can immerse yourself for the next six months in those videos and then determine which radio you want to get that's fine you can do that it's uh it's completely up to you um i didn't do that entirely but i did spend a fair amount of time researching what i wanted to buy after i little after i bought my little baofeng spent my little my 30 bucks on my radio here um and then i started doing some research on how to make it better and then it was just like this cascade of information i will chat with you guys all some other time stay prepared